I'll try. I'll try. Isaac, what the fuck?
All right, good morning, guys. Uh, last class, I got about half of the assignments from you guys on assignment 31. So about half of you already turned it in last week and got credit for it. If that was not you, you need to come turn it in if you want full points for it. I said you could finish it up if you didn't have time last week. <coughs> if you're not sure, just check to see if I wrote a grade on it. If it has a grade written on it, then it should be fine. If it doesn't have a grade written on it, you should turn it in. Because it was, it was something we hadn't learned. Yeah. I should make sure it's in one of your 50s. Okay, any others? Okay, so <clears throat> the last uh, class and a half, we've talked about implicit differentiation. So taking the derivative of y's with respect to x, we created y primes each time. Today we're moving on to the other big topic in unit three. So unit three has a couple smaller things, but the two big things in unit three are implicit, which you should have a decent grasp of now and related rates. So we're going to spend all class today on related rates um, and we'll even practice some more related rates on Wednesday. There's just more variety to the question so they take more practice. All right and you may not know why just yet but if you hang with me for five minutes here <coughs> you will see that there are some geometry formulas you have to know within related rates. So instead of you all asking me a million questions on do I need to know this and do I need to know that, <coughs> I'll just tell you the important ones that come up a lot. You certainly need to know Pythagorean Theorem, where C is the hypotenuse. If you don't know the area and circumference formulas for a circle, you need to memorize those. Area of a square, really the perimeter of any shape, just add up all the side lengths. And then for the last two, uh, instead of just telling you what they are, I want to show you a good way to uh, find the volume of a three-dimensional shape that works almost always, uh, and it makes it where you have to memorize less of this stuff. Um, so when you're talking about a three-dimensional shape, <clears throat> you could either have two bases, which we would call a prism, or it could have one base and the opposite side could be a vertex like a cone and the volume <coughs> of anything with two bases is going to be capital B times H where capital B is the area of the base and the pyramid is the exact same thing area of the base times the height, but a pyramid is times a third. So a cone is a type of pyramid because it's got one base and one vertex. So it's going to be one third the area of the base. And what would the area of the base be for a cone? What shape is the base? What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. And then times h. So to me, I don't really memorize that. I know it's area of the base <coughs> times the height. If it's got two bases, times a third. If it's only got one base, so one third area of the base. The base was a circle, pi r squared times the height. Um, whereas a cube has two bases, like the top and the bottom. <coughs> So this is kind of a silly one to use this on, but if we call the side lengths S, the area of the base would be side squared times that by the height, which would be another side. Side squared times side gives you side cubed. But this is just a nice neat way to figure out the volume of most three-dimensional shapes. I say most because there's a few others. The big common one is volume of a sphere. Volume of a sphere is a very common one for your AP exam. But 
they don't make you memorize it. They always give it to you in the question. These are the ones that they expect you to know. So if you happen to not remember any of these, you need to relearn those as soon as possible. Okay, so what a related rate is and what that has to do with these. Our second handout this morning. <coughs> I've got some space at the top for us to put down some tips and hints and strategies. And of course you can add to that. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to uh, put some specific ones up here as we look at these questions. So I, I think I've mentioned a few times over the last few weeks, <clears throat> I am kind of sick today, so bear with me here. But related rates is probably my favorite topic first semester, just because the questions are very interesting, they're very real world-ish, and honestly, you only need to know one more thing of calculus before you can do all these now. you got to practice it a bunch to get good at it and feel comfortable with it. Uh, but things like snowballs melting at this rate, how fast is the radius changing, stone makes ripples in the water, how fast is the area changing, edges of the cube are expanding, how fast is the volume changing, uh, ladders falling down the wall, uh, how fast is the ladder falling down the wall, all some stuff that like you could spend all day just you know trying to guess and check and you could get close I guess but with just a tiny bit of calculus you can answer these type of questions okay so question one I'm gonna go over all these with you obviously um, a certain calculus student hits his calculus teacher in the head with a gigantic snowball if the snowball is melting at a rate of melting at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute what is the rate the radius is changing when the snowball's radius is two feet. So we certainly need to, <clears throat> one of our tips here, we need to list out all the given information. So when it says the snowball's radius is two feet. I'm gonna say R equals two feet. What rate is the radius changing? So this is what we are trying to find. What variable do you think that is? Okay, so it's radius, but it's how it's changing. So that's not R, that's R prime. It's the rate of the radius. <clears throat> and then same idea with this red stuff. It is melting, so it's going down 10 cubic feet per minute. And that is how the volume is changing. So not V, but V prime. When something is changing over time, that's its rate. That's the calculus aspect. So they give us those three things. And within all of this, we have to figure out what geometry shape are they talking about. Something with the radius, something with the volume, something that looks like a snowball. To me, that sounds like a sphere. And the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. This is one you don't have to memorize. I would have put it on that first handout if you did. So in all of these questions, you're going to have to pick out a geometry formula. Sometimes it's volume of a sphere. The next question might be area of a circle. The next question might be the volume of a cube <laughs> or the surface area of a cube or whatever. It could be any, some geometry formula that ties this stuff together. Now, of course, this is calculus, and first semester we're focused on derivatives. So this is the next part that, this is the only part that should be completely new to you. And it's not really completely new, it's an extension of uh, implicit. So last week when we talked about implicit, we said if you want to take the derivative of x squared, you use the power rule, 
and you're taking the derivative of x stuff with respect to x. But since this is like multiplying by 1, we don't have to keep up with it. And then we started to say, well, what if you take the derivative of y stuff? You can still use power rule, but anytime you take the derivative of y with respect to x, we had to create a y prime. Now, that's not unique to x's and y's. Anytime you take the derivative of a variable with respect to some other variable, you have to create this prime. So it's not something special about x and y. It's that we were taking the derivative of y stuff with respect to some other variable that we needed a y prime. So I say that <clears throat> because now I need to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of v would be 1, just like the derivative of x is 1, but I'm taking the derivative of v with respect to time. So we certainly need to add this to the top of our page. I forgot to tell you that. Related rates, related rates are when you're taking the derivative of something with respect to time, time is moving, or if it says uh, the function is in terms of t for time. So everything we're doing today, we're taking the derivative with respect to time. That means every time we take the derivative of a variable that's not a t, which is pretty much everything, we will have to make that variable prime, just like we did y primes when we took the derivative of x last week. So give me just a second here, I forgot to do attendance. I guess everybody else is sick too. Check. Okay. <coughs> so I'm taking, <coughs> I took the derivative of V with respect to T. So I'm just going to call that V prime just because, again, I think that's a little bit cleaner looking. On the right side, if I take the derivative, all of this is just a number. So I really just need to do the power rule to R cubed. So bring the power down, lower the power by 1, but train your brain to realize you just took the derivative of R stuff with respect to time. So these threes can cancel and instead of saying dr over dt you can say r prime but this is what this guy's derivative looks like derivative of this with respect to time and the derivative of this is just power rule but with respect to time that's why there's an r prime now on the easy questions you're almost done you're going to plug in the information they give you volume is decreasing at negative 10 feet cubed per minute 4 is just a number, pi is just a number, r represents the radius, the radius is 2 feet, make it squared, and then the rate the radius is changing, r prime, that's the only, I mean that's what we're trying to solve for in this question. So if you plug in all your given information and the only thing missing is the thing you're interested in, then you're basically done. So you'd go to your calculator and do negative 10 divided by the 4, the pi, and another 4, and that gives you negative 0 0.199. So <clears throat> this is similar to radius. So if the radius was in feet, r prime is going to be in feet, but it's a rate. So it's not just this feet, it's this feet per an amount of time. So if that's per minute, this would be per minute. <coughs> what should make sense that that answer is negative. The volume is going down. The snowball is getting smaller. So it makes sense that the radius is also getting smaller. That's why it's negative. Now again, 
The hardest thing about these questions is the next question is not going to be anything like this. It's not going to be a sphere. It's not going to have the same derivative. It's not going to give you the same values. But what's going to be consistent with every single question and the way you survive this section is you have to realize you've got to identify all the stuff they give to you. You've got to pick out a geometry formula. You need to take the derivative with respect to time, carefully with respect to time. And then the easier questions, you just plug in that stuff and solve for what you want. Okay, so question two. The next couple are still the easier ones. Uh, radius is increased by 2 meters per second. So that would be R prime. That's how the radius is changing. And in this question, we're dropping a stone into Lake Fayetteville, <coughs> causing concentric circular ripples. Concentric circles are just circles within a circle. How fast is the disturbed area growing? So how fast is the area growing, A prime, when the radius is five meters? So you don't have to do this, but I like to underline the information as I think about it <clears throat> because then that helps me see what I've considered and what I haven't considered. But between their description of the problem and based on the variables they give to you, you've got to try to pick a geometry formula out of this. So what geometry formula do you think we should use for this question? Uh -huh. Area of the circle would be perfect. You've got to take the derivative of that. So the derivative of A would be 1, but I'm taking the derivative of A with respect to T, so I need an A prime. On the right, you can do power rule, but Keep in mind, you're taking the derivative of r with respect to t, so you also need an r prime. That's really just chain rule. I know it doesn't really look too much like chain rule, but it's an application of chain rule. And then if we're lucky, we've got everything we need. I know I don't have a prime because that's what they're trying to ask me to find. 2 is just a number. Pi is just a number. They told me when r is 5 meters. It is changing at 2 meters per second. Now, you can see on this question, I'm writing the units out because <clears throat> I'm trying to convince you that this can make your life easier if you do that. So now my answer comes from 2 times 5 times 2 times pi. And if you write out the units, then your units should kind of make sense here. Meters times meters would be meters squared. And area units are always squared per second. And it needs this time component because it's a rate. It's not the area, it's how the area is changing. And so that's it. Not all of them are that difficult. The hardest part is this making sure every single time you take the derivative of something other than t, you create that variable primed. Okay, we got one more, and then they'll step up in difficulty just a little bit. <coughs> All right, this one we've got a cube. Okay, so I really didn't need these for the first few questions. You can see I started doing it on two or three. This picture honestly didn't help me. This cube's probably not going to help me. But when we get to question four, you're going to see that drawing a picture sometimes helps you keep things in order. It's a good way to organize the information. So, draw a picture, certainly a tip. Okay, I want to know how fast the volume is changing, so that's not V, but V prime, when each edge, which I'll call S, is one centimeter. And I also know that the edges are expanding, so the edges are changing at three centimeters per second. So there's the given information between these variables and the description. It's obviously a cube because they say the word cube, um, but they talk about volume. So the geometry formula in this question would be that volume is S cubed. So what is the derivative of V?
b prime. What's the derivative of s cubed? And the s prime. Good. I'm going to highlight those two because <coughs> that's really the. I'm not saying these questions are easy or anything, but that step is really the only unique thing to today's lesson. All right, and then if you're lucky, <coughs> you've got everything you need. I want to find v prime, so I know I don't know that. S is one centimeter. S prime is three centimeters per second. So looks like the rate the volume is changing is three times one square times three. Centimeter squared times centimeter, which would be centimeters cubed per second. And centimeters cubed makes sense because volume is always cubed units, just like area is always square units. And lengths are always linear. OK, so then the only way it's going to get harder, going on to question four. Question four is by far one of the most popular type. So of course, they don't give me any special insight to your AP exam. So I can't say for certain. But I would suspect you'd probably have four or five of these questions on your AP exam. Um, but I can promise one of them is going to be this type. This is the most common type. So I'll probably even have you do a Khan Academy where you just practice this one question type, uh, but not today. So we've got a, this one we certainly need a picture for. There's too much information. We've got a 25 foot ladder leaning against the wall of a house. foot ladder. <clears throat> the ladder is being pulled away from the wall at a rate of two feet per second. I want to know how fast is the ladder falling down the wall. So how many feet per second? If this is feet per second, this is feet per second. I like to just I like to put the blank there so I remember what I'm trying to find and if I know the units I might as well put them there. That way I don't have to think about it again later. When the base is seven feet from the wall. Because it changes. If the ladder's almost straight up and down, it's going to fall at a different rate than if the ladder's almost on the ground. So unlike the questions on the front page, I just can't I can't just say R equals this and S equals that and A prime equals this. It really needs to go towards a picture here. So we know that we have to pick out a geometry formula that ties all this together. Well, what geometry shape do you think we're looking at? Okay, and then that is correct. More specifically, though, a right triangle. And what's a very common formula for right triangles? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem related rates are the most common type. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c has to be your hypotenuse. <clears throat> Call one of the legs a, one of the legs b. It doesn't matter which one is a, which one is b, but the c has to be the hypotenuse. And then we need to take the derivatives. So power rule here, bring the power down, lower the power by one, but I'm taking the derivative of a with respect to t, so I need an a prime. B squared is going to work out the same way. Power rule times a B prime because B and T are not the same thing. Same thing for C prime, power rule, and you need a C prime because C is not the same thing as T. <clears throat> and then most people just go ahead and divide everything by 2 to make all that go away. I will even add that these questions are common enough that some students just memorize this so they can skip those first two steps. I don't really recommend that, but I don't want you to have to memorize anything that you don't have to memorize, but I just tell you that that's how common it is. Okay, so if this is like the front page, we just start plugging stuff in and then we'll be done. So if I'm calling this length A, A is 7, his rate of change is 2. 
Do we know the length of B? Okay, then we've got to keep it B. Do I know the rate of change of B? Nope. In fact, if I knew that, that's the whole point of this question. Okay, do I know the length of C? Yes. Do I know the rate of change of C? Mm -hmm. You do know the rate of change of C. So what numerical value would you assign to that? Zero. Zero. It's not changing. You don't ever use a ladder and it's just randomly getting longer or shorter while you're trying to use it. So that's implied that this guy does not change, so that's zero. So you get to this and you realize this is what's different than the questions on the front page. This is the only way it gets a little bit harder is you realize, wait a second, I can't solve for B prime because I don't have enough information. I don't know what B is to do this. So you have to take a step back and a lot of time your picture has a little bit too much going on, so I'm just gonna resketch it over here. When this side is seven feet and this side is 25 feet, we can figure out how much that side is. You can either do Pythagorean theorem or if you know your Pythagorean triples, does anyone know the seven blank 25 triangle? Anybody want to take a guess? It's 24. So when this is seven and that's 25, that has to be 24. And now we're on our way. Looks like the rate of change of B would be 14 over 24. Um. It is, but you should never have to look at your final answer and think about whether it's positive or negative. I should have made something in here negative. Oh, okay, right here, yeah. <clears throat> so I was about to get to that, I just didn't see my mistake. I should have subtracted the 14 over. So, I don't know, I can at least reduce that, I guess. Negative 7 twelfths. And then again, I already wrote the units from earlier, so I don't even have to think about those. Now notice, <clears throat> since this is going down, it makes sense that the answer is negative. When a rate is negative, that implies it's going left or down, depending on the context of the question. Again, you should never look at your final answer and just decide to change the sign. It really should be calculated within the work here. So sometimes, like, it's kind of sneaky, but the very first question, it said that it was melting at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute, and because of the word melting, I knew that this was negative. But you should never change your final answer sign just based on what you think. It should be accounted for. Okay, so same thing we did on the front page. Picture health, geometry formula, take the derivative with respect to time, plug in the information that you know. The only thing harder about this question is we didn't have enough to solve for what we wanted, so we kind of had to go to the side, figure out that one more piece of information, and then we could finish solving. So that's the only extra hurdle they can give you to make it a little bit harder. Okay, now if it was 15 feet from the wall, if this was 15 feet but everything else is the same, I just want you to see that as almost identical work. You're still going to start off with Pythagorean theorem. You're still going to take the derivative with respect to time. You're still going to divide everything by 2. A prime is still 2, but now A is 15. We still don't know B. B prime is what we're solving for. C is still 25. The length of the ladder is still not changing, 0. Now, for this question, B is going to be different because now we're talking about a 15 
something 25 triangle and I think that's 20 but I'll double check yeah. so Pythagorean theorem to figure out this side is 20 and then you just finish solving 20 B primes is equal to negative 30 so B prime is negative 3 over 2 feet per second So, not the easiest math thing you've ever done, but considering what you're solving for, you're figuring out at that exact instant when the ladder is exactly 15 feet away, if the ladder is that size and falling, you're pulling it that quickly, we know exactly how fast that ladder is moving down the wall. I don't know why you would care to know that, but very manageable to do. Okay, anything that jumps out at you about the Pythagorean theorem questions you'd like to ask? Um, I tend to just keep things as a fraction because a rounded answer is less accurate. You guys need to know that for your AP exam, when you are rounding, you should always round to three decimal places. They, they won't even say it in the direction, well, they say it at the start of your AP exam in the directions that you don't listen to, uh, but then it doesn't say it the rest of the test. So those of you that did pre-calculus last year, that's why every quiz and test, we always ask you to round to three decimal places, just to make that one less thing on your plate for this year. Okay, last one, and then I can let you practice some. <coughs> <coughs> All right, we've got a baseball diamond that's 90 square feet. <clears throat> CJ runs from first base to second base, so he's somewhere in here at 25 feet per second. I want to know how fast is he moving away from home plate, so how many feet per second, again if this is feet per second, I know this is going to be feet, feet, feet per second, how fast is he moving away from home plate when he is when this distance is 30 feet, when he's 30 feet away from first base. Okay, so your first inclination is probably to use something about a square because it says a square in the first sentence. But once we actually do this, we're actually looking at a right triangle. So once again, our geometry formula in this question would be Pythagorean theorem. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So you need an a prime, a b prime, and a c prime because none of those are the same thing as t. And let's just divide everything by two for convenience to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so now it's gonna fall into one of two categories. Either we've got everything we need, we plug it in and solve for what we want, or it's the harder version where we plug everything in and we still have to go and find one more piece before we can solve for what we want. So this side has to be C, it's the hypotenuse. These two sides don't matter. One of the legs can be A, call the other leg B. So I know the length of A, it's 30 feet. I know the rate of change of A, it's 25 feet per second. Uh, I don't know the length of B, but how fast is B changing? It's not changing. The distance between home base and first base is never changing, so that's zero. Um, I don't know C either, and the rate that C is changing is what I'm trying to solve for. So 30 times 25 is 750, 0 times B is 0, so it looks like I just need one more thing to solve this question. If I can figure out how big C is at that instant, then I can calculate how quickly C is changing at that instant. <clears throat> so back to when I said I like to underline my stuff because that helps me identify if I haven't used something. So I never used this. So I guess this is, 
I think Major League is 90 feet per bases, so this is like a uh, little league field, I guess. But if the area is 90 square feet, then each side length would be the square root of that. Because the square is side times side. And so that means each one of these side lengths is the square root of 90. And of course you can reduce that if you wanted to. But that includes B. B is the square root of 90. So if I focus in on this right triangle, this length B is square root of 90, this length is 30, and so from Pythagorean theorem, I can find out what C is, plug it into here, and then actually answer the question that they want. So A squared plus B squared, the square root of that should be the square root of 990. So our answer comes from 750 divided by the square root of 990, or about 23.837. And I already wrote the units down earlier, so I don't have to try to figure that up again. He's running about 24 feet per second at that instant, which is super fast especially for somebody running on such a small field. But. Okay, so again, you may, you probably will never see this question again. So it's not that it's this question that's important, it's the process that's important. Just like all the other questions, I had to pick a geometry formula that matched this. Just like the last couple of questions, I needed a picture to label things. Just like all the questions, I plugged in the information they gave to me. And then like the back page, the harder questions, I still had one more thing I needed to know. So I had to just kind of sidebar, dig a little bit deeper, and figure that out before I could solve for what I wanted. Is that okay? Anything y'all want to ask before you try one? Okay. Then our rest of class <clears throat> will be for you trying these out on a circuit. So I think there's like 12 questions and you will need a calculator. You can see the answers are all rounded here. So you will need to put your answers in the calculator to move forward. So go ahead and try question one and in two or three minutes I'll follow behind you and help out in case you get stuck.
<clears throat> okay, so now that you've had a chance to try it here, we've got a rectangle, so I don't know if it's going to help to make a picture or not, but it certainly doesn't hurt. <clears throat> the base remains 0.5 centimeters, while its height changes at 1.5 centimeters per minute. <clears throat> at what rate is the area changing in centimeters squared per minute? So not what is the area, A, but how is A changing? How is the area changing? And since it's a rate, that's why it's per minute. <clears throat> and because it's area, it's why the unit centimeters are being squared. Uh, when the height is 1.5. So the only thing I don't like about this question is I don't like how they reuse this number. It kind of makes it seem like they're saying the same thing, but these are measuring two different things. So area, base, height, rectangle, the magic geometry formula that you needed to move forward is area is base times height. And if you struggled with this question, it was within the derivative here. Taking the derivative of A is 1A prime take the derivative of b times h, you can't just take the derivative of b, take the derivative of b, take the derivative of h, and slap a multiplication symbol in between them. If that derivatives worked that way, we would have never learned the product rule. You have to use the product rule. There's no way around it, or not if you want it to be correct. So take the derivative of b with h left alone, and then b left alone times the derivative of h. So our answer comes from the rate of change of the base, <clears throat> and they said it stays, it remains, so I probably should have put zero there, zero times the height, which was 1.5, plus the base, 0.5, times the rate that the height is changing, 1.5. So in the end, your answer comes from zero plus one half times three halves, which ends up to be 3 fourths, or 0.75. So I suspect 90% of the issues on this question was taking the derivative. <clears throat> you want to take the derivative of something times something, you have to remember that that's got to be product rule. Okay, so that's just the first couple down. <clears throat> So go ahead and move on to that one, and I will <clears throat> stick with you here for a few more questions before I let you just tell me which ones you want help on.
<clears throat> okay, so for number two, I ended up with an answer of three centimeters per minute. So if you got that for number two, you can ignore me and keep on going. And if you didn't, you need to follow along with me and see where you went different. Okay, so in question two, at first glance, it sounds a lot like question one. Another rectangle, base is still the same, all that kind of stuff. So base is 0.5 centimeters. Height changes at a rate of 1.5 centimeters per minute. But what's different is <clears throat> this question is not about area, it's about perimeter. So how is the perimeter changing? in centimeters per minute when the height is 1.5 centimeters. So same rectangle from question one, but instead of talking about how the area is changing, we're talking about how the perimeter is changing. So perimeter of a rectangle, add up all the sides, you get <coughs> two bases and you get two heights. And then if you take the derivative with respect to t, you get p prime is equal to 2b prime plus 2h prime. So our answer comes from 2 times h prime, which is 1.5 plus 2, oops, sorry, that's a lie. h prime is 1.5. b prime is how the base is changing. Well, it says the base remains this, so he doesn't change. So that's zero. So the answer came from zero plus two times 1.5, which is three. Okay, anything else about this question you need to ask and clarify? Right. <coughs> and for question three, same thing, I'll share my answer up here. So that way you know if you need to pay attention to me going over it. But number three, you should end up with about 4.067. Of course, I'll give you a few more minutes to get there. Try it.
<clears throat> All right, if you're still stuck on number three, if you did not get an answer of 4.067, I'm going over that one now. <clears throat> All right, so we've got a right triangle that has legs X and Y and a hypotenuse Z. At what rate is leg X changing? So that would be X prime. In centimeters per minute, when y is four, y prime is one point two centimeters per minute. Z is five, And Z prime is 3.4 centimeters per minute. <clears throat> okay, so now that they told me it's a right triangle and I see all this information, I'm leaning towards Pythagorean theorem. Now, you never really know for sure until after you take the derivative and start plugging stuff in, but you gotta make an educated guess sometimes. So take the derivative with respect to time. So that's going to create a a prime, a b prime, and a c prime. Because a, b, and c are not the same thing as t. Feel free to divide everything by 2 to simplify it. <clears throat> and actually, I probably shouldn't be saying a, b, and c here. I should have said x squared plus y squared equals z squared just because they're using x, y, and z. But So after the derivative and dividing by 2 looks like that and then start plugging in the information you have. I don't know x. I certainly don't know x prime because that's the point of the question but I do know y. I know y prime. I know z and I know z prime so really the only last hurdle is you've got to figure out how big X is to make that happen. Now this one's not too bad, but most of the time my picture gets too just too much stuff, too hard to follow. So I just kind of reset here. I know this side is 4, this side is 5, so you can use Pythagorean theorem to find this side. <clears throat> or it's the most common Pythagorean triple. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So as soon as you figure out that x is 3, now you just need to solve your basic equation and use your calculator. And I'll throw all that in my calculator again just to double check. But Track that over, divide both sides by three, and yep, that's what I got. <coughs> okay, does anybody have a follow up to this? Any part of that that you missed and you still don't quite get, you want me to speak on again? So sharing my answer to 4, I got 2.4. So if you've already done that one and gotten 2.4, keep on going, please. <clears throat> so as I mentioned at the start of class, we'll practice a handful more of these on Wednesday. So. You don't have to feel like you have this skill mastered today, but <coughs> um, you should be getting a very good grasp of the process and feel a little bit more comfortable from one question to the next. I'll also tell you that the most missed question last week because my B-Day class did this on Friday, was 
number five. And it's not because they did anything wrong on number five, they just didn't plug it in the calculator correct on number five. So maybe with that little bit of a hint, you'll be more careful when plugging that in. <clears throat> okay, does anybody need longer before I look at question four? Okay, so again, I'm not going to work out every single one of these, but I just want to make sure you start off strong, <clears throat> and then I'll ask, answer the questions you need me to actually go over. All right, uh, question certainly sounds familiar. This is the type I told you is the most common. We've got a ladder sliding down a wall. So I'm gonna make a picture here, keep up with what's going on. A ladder is 13 feet long. <clears throat> Looks like it's falling down at one foot per second. Now the fact that it's falling down mean you should make this negative going down or left <clears throat> should be negative. How fast is the distance between the base and the ladder and the wall changing? So I'm trying to figure out how many feet per second is moving away from the wall. Specifically when the base is the ladder is five feet from the base of the wall. Okay, so another question, right triangle. So Pythagorean theorem, calculus, take the derivative with respect to time. <coughs> Make sure you've got the A prime, the B prime, and the C prime. The 
divide everything by two if you want, <clears throat> now or later. And then we start plugging in our stuff here. So hypotenuse has to be C. You have no option about that. So C is 13. The latter's not changing in length, so that would be zero. C prime is zero. They didn't flat out say that, but it's understood. <clears throat> Which leg you call A and which leg you call B do not matter. So I will call this one A and this one B. So it looks like I know A. I want to know A prime. I don't know B, but I do know B prime. So if I'm trying to solve for A prime in this question, before I can solve this equation, I need to be able to figure out how big B is. So once again, I've got a lot going on in my picture, but at the core of it, it's a right triangle where this is 5, and this is 13. You can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out that this is 12, or you can just memorize your Pythagorean triples. So B is 12. <clears throat> so I could add this over. This was zero, but when I add this over, this is 12. So A prime comes from 12 fifths, also known as 2.4. And it's a good idea to get in the habit of putting the units, because of course you will be expected to do that sometimes. But if you put it over here when it describes it, then it's a little easier to remember. Okay, for those of you that needed that assistance on number four, for, is there something else I can add to this to help out? Okay. And then that puts five down here. And again, I think this is probably the most missed question for my second and fourth period class on Friday. <coughs> and again, it's not to do with the calculus or anything. It was all to do with how they were typing it in their calculator. So I, I shared my answer to number five though. So if you've got that, keep going. If not, make sure you pay attention when I go over it here in a bit. Yes, you do. I just don't know what the formula is. It's fine. That's one you don't have to know. Oh, okay. That's, they'll always put it in the question when you need that. <clears throat> you need this for number six, the volume of the sphere. That's one I told you you didn't have to memorize because they will always provide it for you. <coughs> they will provide it for you on the AP exam, which means I would provide it for you on your test. That doesn't mean it's on it. The worksheets, I guess, but
<clears throat> All right, if you never did get this for an answer on number five, if you got stuck on it. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm trying not to die over here. Um, <clears throat> All right, so question five, if you needed help with that, we've got <coughs> the rate that his area is changing. <coughs> I know this is talking about his area because of the units. Centimeter squared is referring to units, and since it's per time, that is A prime. How fast is the radius changing? So that would be R prime. In centimeters per minute if the circumference is 10 pi okay so talking about a circle got area radius <clears throat> there is also circumference but you needed the area of the circle formula take the derivative with respect to time make sure you got your r prime here if you lose your r prime you have nothing to solve for <clears throat> They told us this. Now, I'll be honest, when I worked this one last week, I used this to solve for r. If the circumference is 10 pi, that means that r is 5, because circumference is 2 times pi times r. But you really didn't have to do that, because circumference, 10 pi, is 2 pi r. So they tried to set you up for it right here, where you could just do 10 pi. And then here's where the mistakes I mentioned that my other two classes had the, this is probably the most commonly missed thing. This is what you need to throw in your calculator, 32.5 over 10 pi. <coughs> and this is what they were doing, and good chance some of you guys were doing it as well. You might do 32.5 divided by 10 pi. When you do it that way, it's not going to give you the right answer. Not that your calculator is doing something wrong, is you're asking it wrong. <clears throat> your calculator does order of operations very strictly. So it does division and multiplication at the same time, whichever one comes first left. So it does 32.5 divided by 10, and then it comes back and multiplies by pi, which essentially puts the pi in the numerator, and you mean it to be in the denominator. <clears throat> so Anytime you're doing a fraction, your safe bet is to put the numerator in parentheses and the denominator in parentheses. Now, you don't have to put the numerator in parentheses here. You also don't have to put the numerator and denominator in parentheses for 2 over 4, but it only takes one extra second, <clears throat> and then it's, it doesn't cause this problem because it does this implied. Uh, when we do big fractions like that, we have implied parentheses around the numerator and implied parentheses around the denominator. Your other option is you can hit alpha y equals option 1. Alpha y equals option 1 will let you type it in like it looks. And then it understands that you want to do all this stuff first, do all this stuff second, and then divide them. So that's okay too, but not this top way. That's how they were doing it in my second and fourth period class last week. Parentheses around the top, numerator and denominator, or use the alpha y equals option one to type it in as a fraction. And that's how I got that as an answer. Okay, anything else about that one? Okay, so even if you were unable to work ahead here, uh, this one only has, what, 12 questions total. So I do want you to try the rest of the questions next class, please, or before next class. One second. Um, I do want you to try the rest of these before next class, and then when I see you on Wednesday, I will answer a question or two. <clears throat> from it so not a lot but a few and um, 
we'll practice some more of these on another handout so that you can continue to get better at those. But for now, it looks like we're down to about six minutes or so. So, share my puzzle with you guys. <clears throat> I think you did this last week. You did this last week. No? Okay. <clears throat> I need a system to keep up with what classes have seen what. But there's your puzzle if you want to play with it. But you got about six minutes. <clears throat>